G'day, it's Adam Mora, VK4 GHZ. This is part two in a series of videos looking at my Nexion interface for a K3NG rotator control system. In the previous video, we looked at just a basic azimuth only system. And in today's video, we're gonna introduce elevation and a decimal point. Stick around. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at my rotatorfeatures.h file while it's compiling. You can see I've defined feature elevation control and my elevation sensor is an ADXL345 using the Adafruit library. All right, let's upload it. Like so. All right, elevation clock, GPS park and auto park features are now enabled. Now just to show you my uh, elevation system, it's still on the breadboard. I'm using an ADXL345. This is off eBay. They're not particularly expensive. It's an I2C device. It's communicating via a 30 meter run of Cat5 cable via a pair of P82B96 bus transceivers, one at either end. And to complement my G800 DXA azimuth rotator, I'm using one of these um, relatively inexpensive uh, linear actuators off eBay. Now, as you see, as I tilt the ADXL345, 45 degrees there, you'll see the reading change. It'll even go negative if you go the other way. So that's the elevation setup. All right, with elevation enabled, it opens up extra controls up and down. No surprise there. So if we press up, my linear actuator in this case is going up. Have a listen to it when I stop it. Hear that? You can. That's the slow start and slow stop that you're hearing. Like so. Now, when you've enabled elevation, there's a second page. This one I refer to as the numerals main page. This is the main gauges page, so it sort of resembles a, a Yaesu G5500 controller. Elevation on the left, azimuth on the right. Just like the main numerals page, if you touch the gauge, you can enter a manual azimuth in, say, 123 degrees, and go. And you can see the azimuth rotator is going to that bearing. And if we touch the elevation gauge, we can send it to a specific elevation, say 23 degrees. Now that's going to go up. Now because all of this is on the breadboard at the moment, there's no feedback loop. So it doesn't actually know that the linear actuator is moving. So I'm just going to manually stop that. So you now have two pages, the main numerals page and the main gauges page. Which one becomes your default page when you boot the system up is determined by this radio button here. So you can either get you, so you can either default it to numerals or gauges. So if I power this up, it'll power up in the gauges mode, like so. And if I were to set the default screen to numerals, when it powers up, it powers up on the numeral screen. Not only that, with the elevation gauge, you can also flip that around. Now at the moment, zero degrees is on the left-hand side and 180 is on the right-hand side, just like a G5500 meter. If for whatever reason you prefer to flip that, just select the reverse EL gauge and it's flipped. And as we go up and down, you will see the gauge move accordingly. I'm just going to take that back to normal. And as we move our sensor, you'll see the reading go up and down. Let's introduce a decimal place. All right, on my rotator settings.h file, I found the line here, define decimal places. We'll go to one decimal place, compile and upload that to the microcontroller. 
There we go. Now I've defaulted back to the main numeral screen. We've got an extra decimal place there. Which also appears on the gauges page. Alright, when you've enabled a decimal point, the keypad changes. Believe it or not, you've got access to a decimal point now. So I could enter, I'll say, 179.8 degrees. And off we go. Now there's basic error trapping. If you try and enter an azimuth more than 360 degrees, say 361, it will warn you error maximum 360. That error message stays there for two seconds and then will disappear. So then you could backspace and enter a valid input. Just stop that. Likewise with elevation, there's some basic error trapping there. The system doesn't know whether you're running a 90 degree system like I am with a linear actuator or, or a G5500 which can do the, the flip and cover 180 degrees. So it is limited to um, 0 to 180 degrees. So in instance if we put something silly in like some, maybe we mixed up um, um, elevation and azimuth. So we tried to enter you know, 256 degrees for elevation. That will warn you error. Maximum is 180 degrees. Adam, one decimal place is great. What about two? My advice is don't. Let's have a look why. Now, room is really tight on this display. And you'll notice with a second decimal place, the degree symbol actually drops off. And if I was to tilt the elevation up, as you can see, see how the decimal place just dis disappears. Not so bad on the gauges page. There is some room there, but well, the decimal place, oh, the, yeah, the decimal symbol, sorry, has disappeared off there. Now, I think you really need to question, do your sensors and your actual motors really have 0 0.01 degree resolution? I probably don't think so. So my advice is, if you want a decimal place, just stick to one. Now just to demonstrate the update rate slider and what that does, I'm going to speed this up down to 100 milliseconds. Let's go back to the main page and now you can see the, the data is updating every 100 milliseconds. Now that may be annoying depending on how much slop you have in your, your sensors and your system. So we can slow that down. So that was 100 milliseconds. This is what it looks like with one second updates. Oops. These are one second updates there. Me, I kind of prefer just a 500 millisecond update rate. So somewhere in the middle. Kind of suits me. Now colors. The colors you set here will flow th on, the, on the main numerals page, will flow through to the gauges page. So for instance, if I want to make my elevation, uh, um, let's say yellow on red, on the main numerals page here, it will also have that same color scheme on the gauges page. Now you can only set the colors on the main numerals page. Azimuth, let's make that uh, blue, um, uh, blue and yellow, like so. And you'll see that colour scheme also appear on your gauges page. Now on the gauges page you also have familiar buttons for enabling your preset page like so. And we'll go to say preset 2. Set on 1RQ. G'day Alan if you're watching. Down. Um, because we don't have any feedback with the ADXL345 linear actuator at the moment. And you can also park your system. see there. Alright, so that's what elevation looks like when you've added that to your K3NG rotator controller system on a VK4GHZ Nexion display. Whew, that's a mouthful. In the next video we're going to look at moon and sun tracking.